In this video I'm going to show you the basics of electroforming. I'm by no means an expert, but I have been doing this for the better part of three years, so I've learned a few things along the way. I recommend you check out r slash electroforming on Reddit and Jason Welsh on YouTube. They're really helpful. Now you can skip this whole first step and just buy the solution off of Rio Grande or Amazon, but if you take the time and get the supplies yourself, you get more and it's cheaper in the long run. Plus, I think it's kind of fun. But if you got nosy neighbors, I'd be careful. They're going to think you're doing some Breaking Bad stuff. Now the solution is basically three things. Distilled water, copper sulfate pentahydrate, and sulfuric acid. When everything's mixed thoroughly, the solution is pretty harmless, but it's always recommended to use gloves and eye protection. The shopping list is on screen and in the description. I recommend that you plan ahead and get everything in one trip. Put a little bit more than two quarts of distilled water in a pan and get it pretty hot. Not boiling, but pretty close. While that's getting hot, measure out 16 ounces of root kill. The mixture is going to be 16 ounces of root kill and 16 milliliters of sulfuric acid. For every one ounce of root kill is one milliliter of sulfuric acid. Once the water is getting hot, pour it into your mixing container and then stir thoroughly, outside or in a well ventilated area. I recommend while you're at the dollar store picking up a plastic stirring utensil like a spoon. And this goes without saying, but probably throw that spoon away. You don't want to accidentally ingest some sulfuric acid or some copper pentahydrate. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but it doesn't sound too good for you. Once there are no more crystals, let it cool down. This is a flavor syringe. I like to use it instead of pouring the sulfuric acid into a measuring cup because it's less likely to spill and you get a really accurate measurement. Measure out 16 milliliters and inject it into your solution. Then stir thoroughly. I made two batches and I got a full gallon. The container I use is a Carl Rossi sangria bottle. It's about a gallon of sangria for $11 so it makes a pretty decent container. I also recommend clearly labeling your solution. We don't want any accidents happening. Now as far as brighteners go, it's not completely necessary, but it gives a nice shine to your end result. I've used stuff specifically for this from Rio Grande, and Miralax works just as good or if not better, and it's a lot cheaper, so that's why I'm using it here. So measure out about a half teaspoon, then pour it into your solution. And just like that, solution's done. Next we're going to move on to tank setup. Now this is a lot easier if we wait to put the solution in last. I've set up my tanks a few different ways and this is the most efficient. You're going to need 4 equal lengths of copper pipe and some 12 AWG wire. To make the first half of the anode, take two of the copper pipes and wrap 12 AWG wire around them very tightly. The pipe should not be able to slide through. Do this twice and your anode's done. I made some small clips to hold the pipes in place. We want them really sturdy. I connect both sets with alligator clips soldered onto some of that wire. That way you can have all the electricity coming from one power source, making one very large anode. For the cathode it's pretty easy. Just get one small copper pipe quarter inch at the thickest, and then flatten the edge to run it across the middle of the tank. This is what we're going to use to suspend our parts in the bath. Any thicker diameter, it's going to be hard to take in and out. Fill it up and the tank's done. Now in order to put copper on our pieces, we're going to have to use some sort of conductive material. The three methods that I use are mixing graphite with acetone, the acetone evaporates leaving just pure graphite, but it's not that durable. If you're trying to seal an object, you can use PVA glue, wood glue, or Mod Podge mixed with graphite. It's not the greatest fidelity, but it will seal the object underneath. And if you want high definition, I would use an ink mixed with graphite. I use India ink and graphite and it works really well. I tend to use this one the most. This copper pipe circuit board ring is my take on a Craftsman project. I really recommend you check out Craftsman. These videos are really good. Everything that you paint with this conductive material is going to have copper plated over the top of it. It's a good way to hide seams. Now this bark is an organic material, so we're going to have to seal it with a Mod Podge and graphite.
We're going to plate over the whole shelf, so we're going to use India ink for the most detail. After you've painted it on, make these little Christmas hooks and then dangle it into your solution, making sure it doesn't touch the anodes. If it does, it'll short, turning off the power supply. Some power supply tips. A lower voltage for longer will produce a cleaner plate. But if you wait a couple hours and then turn the voltage up, it'll have a bunch of nodes growing on it, kind of like a sunken treasure look. I think it's pretty neat. But if you're making something somebody's going to wear, you're going to have to file some of these down. Once you take your parts out of the bath, I'd dip them in some baking soda and water to neutralize any residual acid. To patina these, I use liver of sulfur, and then I hit it with the buffing wheel. And that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video useful. I think it's a pretty neat hobby to get into and it's pretty cheap to start. Everything I got here was around 100 bucks. Anyway, like and subscribe and all that and I'll see you in the next one.